The two acts tonight, washing the feet and the institution of the Holy Eucharist, uh, render the events of the past present so we may participate in Jesus' saving actions. Indeed, this is true to say that we have those past things happen presently each time we celebrate the Eucharist. We render past events present so we can participate in Jesus' saving actions and that we can share in his life. The act of washing the feet of the disciples, which priests and bishops, cardinals and, and the Pope around the world repeat on Holy Thursday, is an act of service. Jer Jesus carries out this act of service which is usually done by slaves. He, our Lord, who contained in himself all power and might, carries out the act of a lower than low slave. Jesus then told us his disciples to do the same for each other in service. Be brothers and sisters in service, not in ambition, but in service. Each of us needs to be at the service of our neighbor. Washing feet is an action with memory, something given to us so we do not forget. Just as Jesus gives us the Eucharist as an action with memory, something given so we do not forget the Holy Eucharist, so that we will never forget him, a way to remember for certain a way to connect and stay connected to him in this, our life today, and in centuries past as well as centuries future. It was a small object, maybe about two inches long, made of steel. It was colored blue and had plastic wheels on it. It had numbers on it, something like this one that I have in my pocket. It's a matchbox race car. Now, to the best of my memory, it was early winter 1972. Watergate and the Vietnam War were causing agitation in politics. The Munich Olympics had had terrorist attacks. Mark Spitz won a historic seven gold medals in swimming. Digital watches were just being introduced, as well as a device that will change science and education forever, the handheld calculator, priced at thousands of dollars, no doubt, back then. I was five years old, and we had been staying with a few of my aunts and uncles, one house to another, for the better part of 12 to 15 weeks. The reason, my brother, who is the oldest, had been in the hospital for a mysterious illness for those unforgettable weeks. It was one evening when I, along with my older sister and my little brother, were taken by one of our aunts and uncles to St. Vincent's Hospital in Toledo. The hospital was huge, a lot of walking for little legs. We rode the elevator, which was a first for me, and when it opened, we were guided to a sitting area. As I looked down the long hallway, I remember seeing a priest. Not just a priest, but our priest from home. And our priest from home was standing next to a door. I think it was our new priest, actually, who was Father Bill Bodart, and many of you who remember him. We waited what seemed like a lifetime in that sit sitting area, and finally, Mom and Dad made their way down the hall to us, along with Father Bill. It was great to see them. It had been quite a while, and while aunts and uncles are good, 
mom and dad are the best. And I could tell mom seemed kind of tired and sad, dad too, but with protective happiness, they told us kids that we were going to make a visit to my brother, that he wanted to see us. So after some time to prepare us for what we would see, tubes and machines, to help him, together we walked down the hospital hall to that door and went in the room. When we opened the door, it was dark. The light in the room was over the hospital bed. And there in the bed was my brother, a 13-year-old teenage boy who looked very thin and very sick. Not what I remembered him to be. He was a wrestler, pretty fun and lots of energy. He loved playing jokes on me and my older sister. There he laid looking very sick. We kids were scared even though mom and dad tried to prepare us. But they gathered us close to him. He said hi and was glad to see us. That I remember. And I remember mom crying soft tears. She was really strong and still is. And to each of us, my brother gave a small gift, something to share with us, something I later learned was for me to remember him by. You see, because the next day he was to have exploratory surgery with a very uncertain outcome. What he gave me that night was a little blue matched box car race car, much like the one that I showed you. Something that I could hold on to. Something to remember him by always. Something to remember him always. If the unthinkable would happen to him, that he should die. Mom and Dad had already lost their firstborn son six months old. A baby with a hole in the heart. And now my brother who should have been an otherwise healthy teen, was deathly ill. While the hours ahead of him were going to be dicey and dangerous, and it takes my breath away just thinking about how close it was that we would have lost him, lost him to death. My final memory of that night was that we prayed. We prayed a rosary together as a family, which we did often at home, we prayed with my brother, with our priest, with our aunt and uncle. That next day, I'm sure with plenty of adult prayers through it all, my brother made it through the 15-hour surgery, having a grapefruit-sized tumor removed from his stomach, serious complications from a disease that we would later learn was called Crohn's. Today, my big brother is 62 and retired with kids and grandkids and still doctoring his Crohn's disease. He may not know that I remember that night, but I do. And while I do not know what happened to the little blue race car like this one, the lasting memory of that night remains with me even now and will forever. Maybe you have a memory or a family story like this one, and I suspect many do, because life is that way. For certain, though, we all have a family story, a family memory of our brother Jesus. It's just like it happened yesterday, so vivid. On the night before he died, perhaps not sure how dicey or dangerous things would be in the next hours, Jesus gave us two important gifts. He gave us the gift of washing feet, something given to us that we should not forget him, something that we should do, and he gave us the Holy Eucharist, an action with memory, something that we are given so we do not forget him. 
And even more so, the gift of his very self in his body, blood, soul, divinity, as we would come later to understand. With us always, a way to remember him, a way to connect and stay connected to him in this life, our life. And so we are gathered close to Jesus this night, who once again gives us these precious gifts. Peter almost misses the gifts, but Jesus lovingly redirects him. Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. How has serving or being served affected your understanding of Jesus' gifts of service and the Holy Eucharist? We are told he loved his own in the world. He loved them to the very end. How do you experience Jesus' love in your life? The answer to these simple questions can be found in part in our prayer tonight. We hear Jesus very plain. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you should love one another. We obey Jesus' command to love as we break bread and serve one another.